practicing the banjo in the cabin, and I do need to practice, it must mean it's self-help Sunday. Something I've promised you guys for a long time and something I'm finally going to deliver. So each Sunday I'm going to post a video and address a question, query about uh, injury, weakness, pain, whatever it is you've asked me about. Um, so if you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and then you'll see the videos come through each week. Don't know why it's pointing out there. Uh, so the way I'm going to do these videos is they're going to be quite short and they're going to be TV based exercise. That's what I call it. So when you're sat on a sofa in a night watching a bit of Netflix or whatever it is, something you can do to alleviate the pain or something simple to follow. Okay, uh, I'm going to try and not use rollers, not use spiky balls and not use exercise bands. I've got loads and loads of videos on the way to use these things to benefit yourself. So this is going to be something slightly different, something to like down a level, something you can do just with your own hands to help. So week one, excuse me, tea in the cabin must be a Sunday. Um, Monique got in touch via a comment on the post, which is the way you will get your videos made. So just stick a comment below, ask me what you're asking and I'll endeavor to make the video. Uh, but Monique asked about knees, specifically pain, swelling, tenderness behind the knee, okay? Um, so what's behind the knee? A whole lot, basically. Lots of veins, lots of arteries, lots of nerves, lots of lymph nodes, lots of stuff in this crease behind the knee, okay? So whenever you're going to look at the behind the knee, you're never going to point your fingers straight in the back. It will hurt. It's not that good hurt where you're releasing something, it's hurt where you're doing yourself a mischief, okay? So don't do that. This is my mate Neil. Now, I like Neil, and anyone who's been here will know how much I like Neil, because knees are, I think, a fantastic, well-made, brilliant joint, yeah? And they're essentially a hinge. They're not a true hinge, because they can internally and externally rotate, but basically a hinge. And I see them as the most obedient child because how they do this, they have no control over. They just do exactly what they're told. And who tells them what to do? The hip and the ankle, okay? So the first thing I'd say is if you're having a problem with your knee, the first thing you wanna do, and I will put a link to this in the, in the description, is check your glute activation. I've got a video on how to check your glute activation and then how to fire it up if it isn't active, and then I've got a series upon series of glute exercises, but it's glute medius is the one you're concerned with when we think about the knee, not so much max, mainly medius on the side of the hip. If you want more of a spiel on that, then stick a comment in and I can just waffle for hours on it. Okay, so that's the first thing I do. Check your hip, follow my how to activate your glutes guide, make sure it's nicely fired up. Okay, now, what can we do? So chances are, chances are, what we're treating is, is a symptom rather than a cause. The cause is more than likely is coming somewhere else. But still, let's, let's treat that symptom because it's still painful and it's still uncomfortable. What we have on a knee, so I'm saying don't go straight in the back, yeah? But we have the gastronemus, which is a big two-headed muscle which comes up like so around the outside, like two trailer park girls, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's amazing how many times I can throw that as a reference. On, and I always laugh, onto the top of the knee, so above, yeah, so it's coming from below, wrapping around, attaching above. above. And then we have three, the three um, hamstring muscles, yeah. Biceps morus going to the outside, and then the two semis, coming around the inside of the knee. So we have tendons wrapping either side of the knee. You can imagine that gastrocnemius and then the hamstrings overlapping the back of the knee. So if we can ease, put some ease into those muscles, will it help the knee? Probably yes. So how do we do it? Let's have a go. Uh, so, the way I'd start is with thumbs, okay? And you could do this because, you know, or no, maybe fingers, yeah? If we do a lot of work with thumbs, 
Yeah, it's, it's one joint and it gets painful and it becomes uncomfortable quite quickly. So let's, let's do fingers for this, yeah? Cross your thumbs over the top of your knee. Wrap your fingers behind your leg with a bent leg. And you should feel on the sides, you can feel the tendons of the hamstrings, quite, quite obvious. If you're not sure you're on them, hook your heel to your bone. By hooking your heel in, you're going to activate the hamstring and then the tendons pop up under your fingers, okay? So now what I'm going to do, it's like I'm doing a bit of a Homer Simpson, yeah? I'm, I'm strangling, strangling my, uh, you know, when he gets bow up, yeah, I'm saying, strangling my hamstrings. So I'm going to pinch and then I'm going to straighten my leg. And I'm going to hold one, two, you see the shake? And then I'm going to release my fingers, bring them back, grab my hamstrings and repeat. Should have done, yeah, one, two and then release. And I can work up the back of the leg like so. Just gripping, straightening. You should do one, two really, but I find sometimes I go a bit quicker, sometimes I don't. The, true, the, the actual technique we're trying to recreate is the soft tissue relief, which is technique, which is lock, stretch, one, two, release. Yeah, but it's how you feel. And you can work through these tendons at the back. So try and just get a bit of release on those hamstrings. There is a full hamstring release video technique with rollers and all kinds of stuff, which will be ready soon. Um, but this is like a quick, you know, while you're watching the telly, kind of way to alleviate some of that pain. Quite pinchy if you have hairy legs, but not too bad. Now we are going to have to use a little bit of thumb because we're going to try and do the same thing, right, until the two heads of our gas drop. So can I show you if I turn around? I don't know. Actually. You can see this is really badly rehearsed. I'm going to come, as in not rehearsed at all, I'm going to come behind my knee. Where's Neil? So there's the back of the knee. It's like I'm coming just below the joint and out to the side. I'm going to grab it like that, yeah? So I'm going to grab the back of my knee and it should be soft fleshiness. If you're going to a divot into a groove, come out slightly. From there, this time, right, I'm going to pinch and then I'm going to lift my foot up and then pinch and then lift my foot up. And I'm going to work through the back of my calf like so. And I'm going to work up and down. You know, how many times do you know? I like threes, yeah. I like three positioning three times and then do something else. But it's up to you. It's until you feel you've had an effect, yeah. Now the calf is tender, is a tender area. So when you poke in, you know, it can be quite sore. It doesn't always mean that's a dysfunction, yeah. You could make a lot of money off people's calves by tricking them into their dysfunction when really a calf it is a tender point. You could put a lot of pressure in. It's gonna hurt if it's, if it's happy or not. So start gently and you're gonna get a feel for how the calf feels, yeah. So you may think, well, on a tenderness scale, that's like a three all the way down. Well, then that's your normal for your calf. If you're unsure, check the other side. If it feels the same on the other side, then that's just how it feels. If you're doing this side and it's like, well, that's like a one, yeah. But that's like a three. Well, that's different. So that's a dysfunction. Does that make sense? So you can check on the other leg to see what is a tender point and what is a dysfunction. Let's say we've gone to the calf and we're just on the outside. It's a bit tender. As we lift up, it gets worse. Okay, so then we'll point the foot away. If we point away as much as we can, it will reduce. Then you can hold, just hold, feels good. I like a little bit of friction. I don't know why. I like a little bit of friction up and down, left and right. I just, and that's not really a tour thing, that's a, that's a me thing. But I just find I can get it to release easier, just for a little bit. You know, if you feel like it's not, it's sort of, it's dipping off a bit, dipping off and it sort of hangs in there, a little bit of friction just tends to move it on. Now as it eases, I'm going to start lifting my foot. If it comes back, I'll back off a bit and then I'll carry on. And I can treat these tender points in the back all the way up doing this. Come up a bit more, that feels fine, that feels fine, that's a little bit tender, so ease off. Ease off so it's just not quite tender. Just hang out on it until you can get your foot all the way up and the tendency is gone. And then find something else. So you sort of do three sweeps and then start hunting out these little points, mainly in the calf, because as a calf, yeah, we've got muscle belly up here. 
in the hamstrings is, is tendon. Yeah. So you're just trying to get a bit of no, even, even so much stretch, but sort of release of the tendon, get the tendons moving and gliding and not sticking. Yeah, but you're not really going to treat them in that same way like you would a muscle belly. Yeah. So that's treating the two muscles which are crossing the back. What would I do then? Heat, hot water ball on the night time, top of the calf. Yeah. Get the circulation coming up through. People kind of think mm, it's a bit swollen. Should I heat? Should I ice? I say heat. Okay, ice reduces swelling. True. If it's if it is it's difficult, but if it's uh, like an edema or something, okay, maybe maybe we think about some ice or there's a taping technique. But if it's just something that's happened, yeah, it's just occurred, and it, and it, and it, the swelling seems to be hanging in, heat through it and push it out. Yeah. If you ice, heat is a natural healing response. Heat is what the body's done to, to heal the problem. So if you inhibit that, if you stop that, then you've stopped the healing response. Uh, you've restricted the pillies and you've restricted the blood flow and the blood is, is what's needed to heal. So why would you stop it? Yeah, if the guy who wrote rice said, I've got it wrong, so don't ice, yeah? Get some heat in, get some circulation in and accelerate that healing process. Um, and then away you go and then from there, what can you do? I mean, that, that's just, you can look at the calf release, you can look at the hamstring release. You could do a bit of uh, same thing across the top, yeah? And just release a bit of the quad. Opposite side, but just release the muscles around the joint. Your quad's attaching, you know, through the quadriceps tendons, the patellus, the patellar ligament tendon, whatever. People argue about that, yeah? But it's crossing the knee. So why not alleviate that, anything that's crossing the knee? Same process, just lock, stretch, one, two, release and work through, yeah? And that's how you can treat all around the knee, quite simply, just while you're watching telly, okay? And then check your hips, strengthen your glutes. So you um, do some uh, standing on one leg, things like that. Uh, single leg balance with each, that video will be up soon. Things like that, yeah. Uh, and if you want to know any more, then just ask, and I can then send you further links yeah, if it's more complex than that, I can send you further links of more things you can do to help. That was my first self-help Sunday. Um, completely off the cuff. Hope it came out alright. And if you want to have your issue addressed, just comment or message or just let me know.